Well, welcome to the AFCI Lounge and Beyond Cinema Magazine here at Cannes. Jonathan Olsberg, Jane Cord, and Steve Clark Hall. Um, so we've got a former producer who's now a consultant, a consultant and a current producer. Um, this, in this changing face of filmmaking and this kind of weirdly, uh, you know, the, the state of flux with incentives and it seems to be a, uh, an ongoing competition to provide the best, the cheapest. A um, couple of questions. Is the cheapest necessarily the best? And what are the key components that you're now finding uh, have, have, have made the, the people who are actually succeeding succeed? And by people, you mean the actual countries that are hauling everybody in. Well, I mean, I, if I can I kick off? I, I think, um, no, it's not all about money, though obviously that is very significant. But there's kind of hidden costs in going to a particular place that might mean that when people get there, if it's not a tried and tested place, that uh, it's not as cheap as they thought it was going to be. So I think that at different stages, when a, when a region's just introducing an incentive, um, they need to be thinking about um, a lot of things in terms of how they compare with their infrastructure and so on. Um, and that needs to be factored into the argument. And it, they should be creating incentives that will ensure that the infrastructure is built and that the producers aren't disappointed so they will continue to come back. So if you're talking from the perspective of the government, they need to be, or the agency that's delivering those incentives, they need to be very aware of those things. Because to my mind, a producer who arrives in a place with a budget that says it's going to be cheaper, but can't find a photocopier and can't find, find a sound crew, and has to bring them all in and so inflate the costs, isn't going to be recommending that people come back. I'm, I'm sure Steve can talk about the, the factors that a producer bears in mind when trying to choose a, a location, if it's a portable um, production, not least the creative um, Im imperatives, which are, you know, a, a primary usually. But I think um, when it comes to the stakeholders that are behind the incentive and um, the reasons that they um, are in the game, it's, I think it's very interesting that notwithstanding the difficult economic times that so many countries and regions and states um, have had, that incentives still are being introduced you know, on a regular basis. And even where a country is having a very hard time um, financially, like Ireland, for example, you know, when Ireland, um, when the government of Ireland or the Treasury ne needed to find places to save money, they shone a, a very strong searchlight on the tax incentive that they had in Ireland, expecting to, f to decide to cut it because they needed to save money. In fact, what they didn't, not only did they not cut it when they investigated it, they actually extended it because it works. And I think um, what we're seeing in this sort of this blossoming of incentives around the world, even though it might appear to be strange that with all this competition going on, the fact is um, attracting production and the ongoing benefits culturally, economically and socially from that happening um, are very, very real. And that's why it's still going on. How rare is that, though, that, that a country chooses to, find, to, to focus on the arts as an impetus to growth as opposed to... A, you know, the first thing you cut when things get tough? Well, it's, it's not rare at all um, because many countries have recognised that the creative economy, as, as um, our industry in film is, is lumped together with, with others um, in, a, in a definition, the creative economy in many um, countries is growing faster than many other sectors, um, is withstanding the buffeting of um, you know global financial crisis better than others and you know even though in any budget you know a finance minister will always prioritize you know health and education and welfare and pensions um, when it comes to other things and there's a choice to be made we're finding that there are lots and lots of strong arguments that can be made um, to support this kind of activity they're not always made um, that effectively, um, because some of the benefits are quite subtle, and, and, and our firm is, you know, that's kind of what we do, if, if you like. Um, but I, you know, it's not an accident that new countries all the time are announcing incentives because they, there are valid reasons to do so. 
Steve, what, what has been, I mean, obviously you've been in the Guy Ritchie business for a while as well, but, um, and, you know, obviously, you know, he prefers to shoot where possible, first and foremost, probably in the UK. But what, is, what factors have been the ones to take you elsewhere? What criteria have been the ones that have been worth moving for? Yeah, not really the UK, more Marble Arch. Um, um, the UK tax credit is, I think, probably the, um, in my experience, the best tax credit that there is in terms, uh, from a producer's point of view, for two reasons. One is the, the way it works in terms of attracting inward investment into the UK, which is that um, all money you spend in the UK qualifies for the tax credit. And secondly, that it is uh, relatively simple to, um, to get the funds. Um, you, you do the audit, you get it passed and the, the, the funds come in. Um, the way you structure various productions um, also works well with the UK tax credit. Um, that you can, I think I'm right in saying, Jonathan will correct me here, but I think I'm right in saying that 80% of your funding, 80% uh, of your spend can qualify, can, can, can qualify, therefore you um, can spend 20% of your budget basically somewhere else and um, access, if there are benefits to be accessed for that, uh, get the benefit from other places. So um, it would be quite a normal model to look for look to spend 20% of your budget on a on a essentially a UK production outside of the UK and seek the most beneficial place to put that production so it could be for example go to Canada for your post production and um, you might well find yourself going to Vancouver and accessing the Dave credit in Vancouver and you you've got the the maximum benefit for for your bucks there the other um, issue though, I mean, leaving aside major studio productions um, that might well want to shoot lots in the UK, the, it is really important for a producer when they are trying to do the evaluation not to take things at face value, uh, to really drill down and really find out what all the benefits and the uh, potential disadvantages are in the various um, territories. And the answers are sometimes quite surprising. You might think, oh, well, let's go to Territory X where the cost factors are lower and there is a nice tax benefit and there is a nice tax credit and everyone buys into that way too early in the thought process. When actually what you've got to do is you've got to do the math on each project. And one project where the benefit lies in going to Hungary, for example, on quite a similar sort of project, but because the balance is slightly different, you could find that Hungary starts to lose its, its, its advantage. And so a simple look at the tax credit doesn't work. You have to really go into the detail to make sure that it works for each individual project. And, and this is the sort of, uh, this is where you need someone like Jane, who understands all of these. Yeah, or me. Um, yeah. Well, well how, that's, I mean, it brings up a good question. What, what, resources, what resources do you use? Who do you go to first to find out and stay, yeah, to stay abreast of these things? To stay abreast well, of these not, things. Not, not Jane, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Uh, not yet, no. Um, yeah, that's right. He'll, he'll give you the answer. But what I, I think there are like two essential drivers. One is, if you like, what Jonathan mentioned, the creative driver. There's no point in going to Territory X simply because it appears to be better if you're going to have to build Territory Y and Territory X. So the first thing is the creative. Does it work in terms of the actors that you need? Does it work in terms of the locations that you need? Does it sort of feel right organically for the script? That's the best reason to go somewhere um, because you can get the creative impact on the screen. Then the second reason is because the economics work, and that's where we have to do the very careful analysis to make sure that it, that it all works. So there, is, there are some territories which the headline is very good, but you then discover that the number of people you have to take into that territory to make the film work, which is the point that you were making, 
is so many that actually you diminish the value of the um, tax credit to the point where it sometimes disappears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My turn. No, what I might just say is because I am much more involved in the facilitation of it once the decisions have been made, though not all producers have the uh, desire or inclination to get as involved as um, Steve does and sometimes I will work with them on that level to do the scenario planning and see what the alternatives are. But one thing I, I would really say, and this is the difficulty with new incentives that are untried and untested, they haven't got the track record and that's why they've really got to power them up in the beginning. But powering it up is not just about money, it's about making sure that the administrators understand the film industry and are able to properly administer it. And I have had that experience in countries that have just introduced it. They pass their act through Parliament and never, they say, here we have, we've got this incentive. And then the, the government don't understand it. And there they are and people come along and it doesn't happen. And when an incentive doesn't deliver, people very, very quickly lose faith in it. What's an example of one that has worked that perhaps has surprised you that they've managed to get it so right well, so Well, quickly? I was quite involved with South Africa and I can very clearly say that in the beginning it was very slow and it stumbled along and everybody said, no, no, no. But people stuck with it and now it does work very well. But it was in danger of toppling in the beginning. Um, and it's only because there were other factors like very beautiful locations and um, cheap production values as well. And co-production treaties. And co-production treaties. And, co and, and good stories. Yeah. That, but that but the DTI the were not getting it together in the beginning. And I know they would admit to that too. And I can say that now because they have got it together now and it's very good. But it, but it was a prime example where it could have all just fallen flat on its face without, you know, um, an enduring But thing. isn't it the case it's that once an incentive is in place and a producer's using it, it's not just the job of the um, competent authority to organise it appropriately, but also the producer, once they've applied to an in, for an incentive, so are told they're going to get it go to shoot but they've still got to abide by the rules and they've still got to prove that they are actually going to do what they say they're going to do so when they've said to an authority yeah we're going to spend this amount of money in your country so we'll get the incentive and then they don't and they spend less then that's a huge problem and again yeah. that's where you can come in and keep an eye on things yeah i mean i think that's a good point because i think producers uh also sort of almost think it's their right to get these yeah. things and I do think there's a, a responsibility to do the right thing by the government yeah. as well um, because obviously the government are doing it for a given set of criteria yeah. whether it's to create jobs yeah. invariably have money being brought into the country um, you know skill transfers infrastructure building and so on and I think the producers when they go to another country to take advantage of that money need to be respectful of why they're there because we want to keep these things going we want it to be a positive experience for the government as well as for the filmmaker well, actually there's a there's a very subtle point to make in, in regard to that government involvement and reaction when a government or a, an industry sets up an incentive what they and this is part of you know our work as, as an advisor what we really encourage them to do is set up a benchmarking mechanism so that they know you know in the future in five years time if it's going to be re-evaluated which is often the case and they bring in you know an evaluator like us or others that, that as that five years has gone on they're constantly thinking of this evaluation and making sure that the data is there and the performance is there so when the, when the evaluation does play, take place they can tick all the boxes and it can continue because the worst thing to happen is investing you know, in an incentive, creating the market awareness of it, having activity happen, and then after a, a, few, uh, you know, a number of years, it's closed down, shut down, reduced, um, as has happened in many US or several um, US states, because it's, you know, the thing about an incentive that's really crucial from a producer's point of view, because of the lead time needed and the decision to go there, is that it's reliable and certain. And anything that kind of messes with that, um, that, that, that comfort level, you know, can be very, very damaging in the long term.